Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are today. When I think about trauma, the lymphatic system, the fascia, it blows my mind. It's like I want to connect all these pieces of the puzzle because I feel like I need some clarity around it. Because if the body holds the trauma, it often holds it in the fascia, like we go into a freeze response or fight or flight. And so if through all of our life we've, we've had a variety of traumas, small, big, doesn't matter, it's, it's all held in our body, every single thing we do is held in our body, in the cells and tissues of our body. And when people talk about doing like trauma healing and you, you, you can release the deepest, darkest things and, you know, the smallest, minutest things through through movement or not movement, but holding poses like with yoga, as an example. It just, I find it phenomenal how this is going to be just so helpful for everybody, not just those with illness, but those who want to to stay healthy. It's through releasing and letting go of all of that old shit that we have space for the new shit to arrive, which it will, inevitably. Life is not a bed of roses. It is full of ups and downs, and we hold each one in our body. And so if we can let go of the old stuff, then we've got room for the new stuff so that we're not overloading the system. If we can make this part of our everyday, just to release whatever needs to be released, whether that's through yoga, meditation, just moving your body in a way that you wouldn't normally. Like I found, say, for the last five or six years, maybe more, I haven't wanted to dance. Like, I used to dance. I used to love dancing. I won a dancing competition when I was in secondary school. My God. I was the first year in secondary school, and I was up at the school disco <laughs> dancing to Madonna's Lucky Star or something. hope it wasn't like a virgin. And um, I remember the crowd kind of had to cheer for the people that they wanted, that they thought were the best. And it was me in this fifth year. And it was just... I had no insecurities back then. I didn't care. I didn't even think. And then suddenly, for the last 10 years, I'll say 10 years, I just haven't wanted to move in that way. And I don't know why. And I feel like I'm guarding myself because there is something buried in there. There's some trauma tucked in that doesn't feel safe to be seen yet but having this knowledge how the body works and the mind like how they co-create how we co-create with our body and mind and yes I am saying that we are separate from our body and mind there is something else going on and it's called your intuition your wisdom you know, people see it in very different ways. It's an energy. It's, it's, it's something beyond the physical and the mental. It's, it's a, a way of being. But whereas I used to be so frightened of, like, getting my blood results or being ill, I just don't have that fear anymore. I just feel so empowered that if something is awry, then I can make it align again. I don't feel like 
anything really is the end of the road. And also, even, you know, what is the end of the road? Is that death? In which case, I've lived an amazing life. I've done plenty with it. I want to do more with it, don't get me wrong. But I have lived an amazing life. I'm so blessed for having had the opportunities, good and bad, that I've had. Because they've made me who I am. And that's the person who's bringing up my kids. And, you know, I've got such a lot of respect for who I am. Because I've overcome a lot of shit in my life. And it's made me stronger and it's made me a better person. And so if it were the end of the line in this physical body, then so be it. It would be sad, but it would not be what I would consider the end. I think there's stuff beyond this. But it's having that fear alleviated makes a massive difference as well. Because every once you've had a cancer diagnosis, it's like every little small thing is is this cancer everything everything a headache a cold a pain in the toe it's everything comes back to is this cancer and I don't that's not healthy it wasn't healthy for me because I'd go into fight or flight and that then removes any healing capabilities that the body has because the body will just be trying to keep you in survival mode at that point. And so for me, losing that fear of illness, cancer, death, is a really big one. And I feel like consciously I've moved to another level when it comes to this illness. I feel like I'm connecting the dots and getting a really strong understanding of who I am and how I've got to be where I am. And from that standpoint, from that viewpoint, I can, I can make different choices. And I think ultimately, if you look at illness in that way, regardless of what illness it is, then it puts you in the driving seat. Because something I really struggle with is how the medical system use what I consider to be the nocebo effect, which is giving you limitations, giving you the warning, the, the timeline on your life, the prognosis. No one knows the prognosis. There are so many different factors, but no one knows that prognosis. So just keep following that intuitive voice which is guiding you in the right direction, and it is, it's guiding you in the absolute right direction. But it's being able to distinguish that voice from your thinking brain. When you tap into that voice, there's a sense of calm, there's a sense of knowing. It's like getting in a hot bath and just relaxing. It feels like that. And sometimes... You know, there can be some opposition from your thinking brain. I'm certainly no exception. It's taken me this long to realise that actually doing yoga is a good thing for me rather than us just laying down, isn't it, and doing nothing. Because I really enjoy yin yoga rather than any of the yoga where you actually have to physically move your muscles. I prefer the stretching and the relaxing. But I couldn't fully see how that was helpful for me. It was like, yeah, it's okay. And I'm sure I'm getting relaxation from it, but very little else. But actually what I'm getting from it is my fascia are stretching and allowing whatever needs to be released, historically, to be released. And that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. Because that's releasing all of those past traumas, big and small. It's allowing them to be seen from a space of calm, deep relaxation, whereby you're not gonna react in a way that is fearful. It's more of an allowing. And this is what these, these drawing, 
not really workshops. I don't know what they are. I'm just being guided to do them. But that's what these bring, is a chance for you to just slow down and be in the moment rather than being caught up in our head all the time. Because those thoughts create that fight or flight again. Oftentimes they do. Because we think if we think through our problems, we can solve them. But we can only solve our problems by being with them, allowing the answers to come through. And the answers don't come through by overthinking. And I tried to tell my daughter this, and she's starting to see it now. And it's hard, it's a hard lesson to learn, especially from your mother. But she's starting to see from her own experience that the more she settles her brain and doesn't react, the more productive she will be and the more that will come through that will help her move forward. She's learning to see that from that place of overthinking, that's where the stuckness is. Okay, wishing you a beautiful day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.